Again, if you have just joined us, a uh, very warm welcome to um, Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences. Um, our next session is on experiential learning and career preparation. And so for this, we have Associate Prof. Uh, Loy Hui Chie, as well as Ms. Joan Tay, uh, who is the Director of CFG. And um, this session is also going to be very ably handled by one of our student MCs. So um, I, I'll, I'm just going to pass it over to her uh, in a moment. But you will notice, of, of course, that the, um, the Poll Everywhere uh, platform is up. So uh, if you haven't already, uh, use the QR code or go to the web link to access that platform. And if you have been on the platform since the previous session, what you want to do is um, just refresh the page so that you enter into um, the, the, the questions for this particular session. Yeah. So I'm just going to be passing it over to our uh, student MC. So enjoy the session, everyone. Thank you so much, Mark. Hi, everyone. Very good morning uh, to all the students who've joined here for this orientation. Uh, my name is Gitali Gupta, and I'm happy to be your MC for the next one hour. Uh, just a little bit about myself. I am an international student who's uh, currently in my year three pursuing my major in economics. And I'm very glad to have this opportunity to be a part of this session because I myself, I'm a very firm believer in learning outside the classroom. And uh, to be very honest, most of my semesters, the list of my CCS have exceeded my number of modules in reading. So uh, yes, I'm happy to um, share this with you all and um, let's take the session forward. So to help us learn more about the experiential learning and career preparation opportunities at FASS, we have Feng Tsing, a year three global studies major, who will be sharing a bit about his journey, followed by a question and answer panel session. But before we get into that, we've got something super exciting planned for all of you. Uh, may I invite you to please take out your phones and join me in playing a Kahoot quiz. Uh, scan the QR code on the screen to log into Kahoot and trust me, you do not want to miss out on this one because we've got e-vouchers worth $100 to give out to the winners. So um, yes, uh, quickly log in. Uh, these vouchers are uh, grab e-vouchers. So it's definitely super lucrative. I would uh, 10 on 10 suggest for you to join. And uh, just remember to log in with your full name as per your metric card as your username to identify all the winners. And, you know, obviously you don't want all your effort to go to waste. Uh, just a reminder, please enter with your full name as per your matrix uh, number so that we can identify the winners easily. Um, just a heads up, a uh, reminder that uh, Kahoot is not just about your accuracy, but the speed is super important as well. So, some things first. Maybe another minute. Hope you all watch the e orientation videos, the two, or the two about FSS, experiential learning, and cardio prep, because that's what this um, is going to be based on. Uh, Joining in and all those still entering the pin and everything, just remember to sign in with your matrix number uh, as the username. And uh, I think let's get started. Yes, uh, best of luck to everyone, and here we go. Okay. Hmm. Wow, 40% 
all two of y'all. You really have watched the video. So um, yes, uh, the uh, the CFG program is CFG one zero zero two, and it's a FASS graduation requirement. FASS is in fact the only faculty to make this a graduation requirement, and it's pre allocated to all year one students. So yes, it'll be pre allocated to all of y'all, and it essentially equips you with essential career skills such as resume writing improving our personal brand and having an elevator pitch and of course sharpening your interview skills as well. So do look forward to this one. Okay, let's, let's go to the next one. Wow. Okay. I'm going to keep an eye on that scoreboard. One, but yes, 300. See, in 2019, CFG organized more than 300 campus talks in NUS. That's more than one per day during term time. And um, in fact, these uh, events were hosted by specific companies that provided with, provided with an excellent platform to find out information about employment opportunities, selection criteria, even the application process, and essentially understand the prospects and the company culture. So yes, do look forward to these events, super important. Okay, we've got the next question. Mm -hmm. Okay, we've got the scoreboard changing, let's see. Hmm. True or false? <laughs> Most of you have got it right. So yes, um, you can gain modular credits. So up to eight MCs for the FAST internship program and two MCs for the FAST mentorship program. So yes, yes, do do make them make them a part of your unrestricted electives. Yes, all of the above, and in fact, these are not the only ones. The Fast 2.0 Industry Tracks is a new initiative launched in 2019, and there are five tracks. Um, so the, these three the, that are mentioned, and in addition, you have the Communications, Advertising, and Media Track, and of course, the Arts, Culture, Entertainment, and Heritage one as well. And all of these five tracks represent the five growing industries that have the greatest employability for FASS graduates. So yes, do look out for industry talks about these and internship opportunities as well. Let's see what the scoreboard looks like. Ooh, yes, we've got Gerald Tan on top now. Let's, okay, we've got, we've got one more question to go. Let's see, let's see what the scoreboard looks like then. This is the last one. Hmm. <laughs> Half of you have got it right, yes. So the NUS internship day is going to be held on 8th October this year. It's going to be in the virtual format, of course. And it's essentially CFG's one-day event that is solely dedicated to the celebration of internships. And in fact, last year's event attracted over 60 employers, offering hundreds of opportunities. So this is an event you definitely want to add to your calendar right away. But... Um, now we're not gonna reveal the winners just yet. Uh, you're gonna have to stay tuned till the end of the session to find out who the top five ones are. We're gonna get a chance to get the e-vouchers from Grab. So um, this is definitely an intense one. And um, let's see at the end of the session who's rewarded for those. Um, I would now like to invite Peng Singh to share his FASS journey with all of you that has really got it all. CCAs, internships, a semester abroad, and a lot, lot more. So let's hear from him and uh, learn about how his university life has helped him, not just in the classroom, but outside as well. Over to you, Peng Singh. Okay, thank you. Hello, everyone. So I'm Peng Singh. Uh, first off, let me say that you'll be joining an incredibly vibrant community with lots of uh, possibilities and uh, uh, experiences you can design and explore for yourself. So I am a global studies major. Right now it's like year three. Um, 
or year four. Um, so especially as a FAST student, right, you get um, three day work weeks or some of us even get two day work weeks. So the question for you is, what are you going to do with the rest of your time? And so here's my journey. In year one, Sam one, uh, if you start from the left, actually I went to uh, still Middle East uh, during the winter. So, so like I was entering uni and I, I was doing my modules and uh, halfway through I saw like the opportunity to go to an exotic place like Middle East. So I applied and I went there, uh, went to Dubai, went to UAE, went to Oman and Kuwait. Um, and it's, it's an NUS program. So that's one of the NUS opportunities you can explore the STEER program. Um, and the best thing actually happened to me was like, it was a group of like 30 people and they were like ranging from year fours to year twos to year threes. And I get to learn a lot from their experiences and how they view university. Uh, we did a lot of networking there actually. And the low point during that point of time was like, I realized I have nothing to offer to the people I'm networking with compared to the year four and year threes when they are like looking for chances like, oh do I get to work in UAE um, that kind of stuff uh, so when I came back from the Middle East in my year one sem two I realized that I have to join some CCAs to explore and one of my friends from the still Middle East program recommended me to the NUS Invest Club where I learned uh, to analyze stocks um, so that's one way to, to learn whether, okay, it's the field of investment for me. And another thing I wanted to try was sales. So I joined another CCA, uh, Isaac, where I get to do business to business sales, where I literally like um, email um, companies, startups, SMEs, and, and present them out of packages and, and do a pitching. Um, from that semester, that's my year one experience. And I realized that I didn't really like investment so much. And then I joined, I continued as sales because um, I really like sales, uh, outgoing personality. Um, and so I, I was promoted to the sales team leader and I got to do some training, you know, uh, train how to do, uh, train other people how to do sales and also do some account management. Uh, so that's like some professional experience gained through CCAs. And from there, my year two, um, I, got, I stayed on in Isaac and I, I moved function to uh, talent management, sort of like HR role, um, where I get to try out more stuff, more professional skills like um, um, training, onboarding, offboarding, uh, recruiting, that kind of stuff. And um, actually, that's when I realized that I really like HR. I like it more than sales and like it more than investing. So I went to interview for internships. But then I realized that it's super competitive, you know, like I was like at an interview at MasterCard and there was like 10 people, good assessment center, and nine of them were all like B students and I was the only FAST student there. And, and they were like, there was even masters in, in business administration for SMU. So I realized that, oh shit, the, 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 the market is really competitive out there. Mm -hmm. And I decided, okay, I want to go abroad again um, to an exotic place again. And I, I chose India. So that was like kind of interesting. I, uh, you can ask me questions about it later. And from there, once I was abroad, and I get to like clearly look at myself and I realized that I have to patch up my interview skills. And that's when I had like my first consultative meeting with like CFG advisor, um, where she guided me on how, 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 how can I prepare for the interview. And actually at India, I, I nailed an interview to get to a six months internship at Siemens. So that was like my next semester where I took a leave of absence to, to go intern, to do an internship in a, in a, a big corporation to, to, to learn the ropes of exactly how corporate HR is like uh, compared to my Isaac uh, talent management experience, which I was doing simultaneously, a uh, leave of absence and also a CCA. Um, and then from there, I realized that, okay, this is really what I want to do. Like, I'm really passionate about this field. And I wanted to try out another internship at another type of company. You know, uh, Siemens is engineering firm, but SLO is more of like a fast a S, a FMCG with a bit of research, supply chain operation, that kind of things. Um, so I did another program there. And I realized that I needed more help. So that's what, um, to get to where I really want to go. What exactly should my career path look like? 
So I joined the advisory mentoring program. I realized that I needed a mentor, mentor support to guide me along. And finally, that was like my next semester. Then um, this coming semester, um, you, you know, remember I said like university is about experiences um, outside of classrooms. So I wanted to try out the entrepreneurship program, how to start your own business. And NUS, of course, has that in store. It's like a NUS Overseas College, NOC, you might have heard. And I applied to go to Israel, <laughs> another exotic place. Uh, but because of COVID, uh, I'm doing an internship in, in Singapore. Um, yeah, so that's, that's how my journey is like uh, throughout university. And my advice is like, just use op university as the opportunity to explore your passions through a lot of experiences. So then at the end of four years, you know what your passion is. Then you can realistically translate it into a job. Uh, and the only way to do it is go beyond the classrooms and, and try them out. Thank you. Wow, thank you so much for that sharing, Ponce. Your journey has truly been a testament that there is no shortage of opportunities here at FASS. I hope all of you are just as excited and inspired to seize them too. Ponce, may I please invite you to join the rest of the panel as we move into the Q&A session. Uh, cool, Ponce. thank you. On the panel here today, we have Associate Prof, uh, Prof uh, Loy Huizi, uh, the Vice Dean of External Relations and Student Life at FASM. Welcome, Prof. Hi, hello. <laughs> uh, we, also have, uh, uh, we, we also have with us Ms. Joan Tay, the Director of NUS Center for Future Ready Graduates. Hello, freshmen. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Joan, may I please invite you to address the students and then lead us into the Q&A session. All right. Thank you so much, Kitali. Um, it feels good to be able to be uh, part of your orientation program. So I would like to thank uh, the deanery at FESS, uh, Prof. Loy, the organizing committee, and my career advisors for um, inviting me. Um, as director um, of the Center for Future Ready Graduates, CFG in short, um, I would like to briefly share how we engage um, our students. Um, CFG, we adopt a proactive, um, very student-centric approach to um, 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 offering our students um, the opportunity for personalized coaching to help you build up your skill sets um, through a variety of industry focused events and then to profile and demonstrate your talent to employers. Um, so, in short, um, this is what we do, but I get it, you would have more specifics uh, from the PowerPoint and presentation materials that have been uh, shared earlier on. And from the Kahoot quiz, I can see you also have a good sense of some of our programs and engagement. So, Gitali, um, shall we proceed to the first Q&A? Yes, yes, let's go. Uh, so, can you the first question? Okay. So, uh, Ms. Joan, maybe you would like to address this about the specific career guidance provided for FSS students. Well, as I said, we take a, a student-centric approach. So uh, all students in FASS, you are assigned to a career advisor and you will get to know your career advisor through the Career Catalyst module, uh, mm -hmm. which most of you would embark in your first year. In fact, that is a privilege that your faculty has extended to you. Um, besides business school, FASS is the only other faculty that um, has this um, Career Catalyst program, which is an early career prep to enhance your success at internships for year one students. So uh, students, you can assess your advisors for one-on-one -on -one coaching that um, your advisor may help you to define or to discover your, your strengths, your passion, um, alert you to opportunities um, that you may identify um, for uh, pursuit of internships. And then the many other workshops and platforms uh, and digital resources that we have to help you refine that skills so that you can prepare yourselves for success. 
I think as a start, um, we have already shared the four-year career readiness roadmap with most of the year ones. So um, starting um, from your career catalyst, you will have a good sense on how to chart um, your uh, four-year planning um, from there. Yeah, I can add a little bit of so. So, so happy to see uh, all of you here. Well, C is a metaphor, of course, here is speaking purely a metaphor because we're on webinar, right? FASS cares a lot about making sure that our students are properly prepared for the workplace. Now, let's, again, but we, we got to be, we got to make sure we understand the overall concept, right? We exist as an institute of higher learning. We are, edu we are a university. And this is a humanities and social science, uh, you know, part of the university, right? We want to give you an education in the humanities and social science. And you are here because you want to learn about the human condition. You want to be able to reflect upon it. So that's the reason why most of the majors are very intellectual, right? And most of the majors don't pack in things like compulsory internships and all that. But it's not because we don't care about those things. It just means that there's a bit of division on labor, right? You learn that hard intellectual stuff in your majors and then you have UE space, you have the rest of your time in the week, you have the rest of the time in the year. If you're going to do it, so for those of you who saw my pre-recorded email, uh, pre-recorded video, I actually drew some charts about how much time you spend in a year, you know, sleeping as opposed to doing stuff and all that. You have a lot of time throughout your whole university career to do all these things, like what Gitali says, you know, explore things, have experiences, do internships. And we are here ready to give you the opportunity and support you. Right? And our great colleagues from CFG uh, will have been working with us, you know, from day one, basically, right, to make this happen for you. Yeah. Uh, do we have another question as well? Yeah. Uh, yes, let's go on to the next one. So uh, the career paths for sociology and psychology, and I think, yeah, we can probably go into the specific ones for each major. If, uh, Prof. Roy, maybe you want to address this one? Yeah, so it will, of course, be very unfair for me to literally go into each of the majors. We'll take out all the rest of the time. We have 20 different majors, right? That's a general rule of thumb here, right? You have to remember that at the end of it, most students, uh, in fact, most of the FASS graduates, don't literally do jobs that say sociologists or psychologists, right? Mo, mo, you know, about 40% of the graduates end up in the public sector, including teaching, and then another 60% end up in the um, private sector, all kinds of jobs. Why are they hired? They're hired because they are interesting people, they are smart people, they are well-spoken people, and they have done things like internships and all that. Mm. So you're going to have, I, I always said, uh, I think Joan, you were, we went to JP Morgan, there was a, FASS graduate there, remember? And she was a sociology yes. graduate, right? In the management. Right. So, so don't, don't ever get stuck in thinking that I study sociology, there must, therefore they are like this one particular job I'm gunning for. Mm. It doesn't actually work this way and you probably discover that that's not the job you actually want, right? Okay, but in general, the difference between the two majors is sociology is about the study of society, right? How different social structures influence our behavior. Psychology is more about individual and brain behavior. Right, individual behavior. So both kinds of knowledge gives you a lot of uh, leeway and a lot of leverage to be able to, and also use in workplace, right? So workplaces, uh, you know, companies want people who are able to understand company culture, uh, organize company culture, think about how to engage uh, customers and all that. So, so in terms of things like HR, in terms of even company uh, planning for how do we do an advertising campaign. So there are a lot of scope for both sociologists and psychology as well, right? Now, if you want a career in clinical psychology, then you need a master's of clinical psychology. So don't forget that, okay? Um, Joy, you have anything there? Because I know you, you also look at the data about where our people go. Yeah, yeah I get it. Um, psychology, sociology, or even the other majors in FASS do give students um, the essential groundwork uh, for uh, a lot of um, career opportunities in the job market. Yeah. Um, the important thing is not to be linear in your approach and think that um, as a psychology grad, I can only go into specific type of careers. In fact, um, given your understanding of human behavior, I get it, a lot of companies would uh, uh, want you as employees. Um, I would encourage you to be ambitious and to um, really take um, advantage of all the opportunities that are offered um, to um, find out um, to um, the, whether it's the mentorship program, whether it's our industry talks, our, our internship day. Um, you are in your year one, this is the best time. You're not pressured to have to look for a job. 
So this is the best time. You just walk into um, a networking event and start finding out what it's like to work uh, for a FMCG company or a luxury brand or a consulting firm. And there may be something that um, you did not discover about yourself and your fit, but after many conversations, you begin to realize you actually do enjoy certain kind of work. And um, yeah, that's where you start then attending workshops, build up your skill sets and take advantage of all your learnings as well. Yeah. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, let's see what the next question is. Okay, so what internship and mentorship programs are available? Um, I think we've, we've gone over this, but um, Ms. Joan, maybe you would like to... Uh, no, uh, maybe, I, no I, I should, technically I should answer this. <laughs> okay. Okay, because it, I was also at a previous session, I noticed that some students were asking this. And so please mm. understand some big differences, uh, conceptual differences, right? An internship is, a, is something that happens between you and the workplace, you know, in a company. Even if you claim a modular credits, whether you, whether you claim modular credits for it, in a sense, it's kind of besides the point, you will get benefit by doing the internship, right? It's the CVs, it's the line in the CV, it's the connections you're making, it's the experience you're picking up, it's the, you know, that kind of, uh, you, know, uh, you know, workplace experience that you're picking up. Now, we will support you with modular credits if that's what you want. Some people want to use their UE space for other things. So, you know, this may not even be relevant, right? Many, I'm very sure that Gitali and uh, Peng Jing, I'm very sure you didn't claim all that many modular credits for the things you did. I'll be very surprised if you did because you did so many things, right? <laughs> right? So, but if you want to claim some modular credits, we do have the modules that can support it. The thing to remember is that when you do the modular, when you do the internship modules, you're doing things for us. You're not doing things for the company. We're going to give you the grades for what you do for us. Mm. The reports you write for us, the reflection you write for us that helps you cement your learning, okay? Second thing that you need to understand, in FASS, our general principle is we will find those opportunities. We work very closely with CRG. CRG works very hard to get those. We go to companies and persuade them to post their ads with us and all that. But we do not see our business as literally helping you in particular getting that particular internship. We need you to learn how to do that. We need you to try. We need you to cold call. We need you to fail. We need you to get rejected five times and then the sixth one is the one you actually you know, that accepted you, then you don't want that one. We need you to go through that kind of stuff, right? And you, we can't do that if we just literally pair you up with internships. Mm -hmm. right? So we see our job as, we will find those mentors for you. We will find those pool of mentors and internships, but we need you to apply. And the portal to apply is Talent Connect. Okay, and that's hosted by CRG. Uh, Joan, please. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, what, you know my thoughts on this. You know that we have been talking about this for a long time. Yeah. Yeah, I think the whole idea is to simulate a real-world job application process for you. So if we just match you to internship opportunities, then we are actually not helping you to be competitive. You need to keep applying. And then we tell students, if you apply, you send in 50, 60 applications and you don't get any response, perhaps it is your CV that's not up to speed. Uh, the fit is not there. It's not getting the attention of employers to want to call you for an interview. So this is where you need to book an appointment with your career advisors to enhance and improve on your impact and branding. But if you have been caught up for interviews and after multiple rounds, you still don't land an offer, then it is very likely that your interviewing skills need to be sharpened. So um, you again need to make appointment to uh, practice interviewing workshops or you can leverage on some of the offerings um, under the booster series where uh, we organize like crack the case, how to ace an aptitude test, how to ace an assessment center. So to, um, the more you apply, the more you go through the process, then to, um, the sharper you'll be, uh, the better the, um, uh, the fit and um, you will eventually um, find something worthwhile. Yeah. So that's why we wanted you to start as early as year one, because um, if there's something to improve on, at least you can work on it. And yeah. even if you don't land up with an internship eventually after lots of applications, you can still consider volunteering, plan B. So this is how you build your profile year on year. 
And I am quite impressed with what Panjin did. Um, he's um, highly motivated and you see from his example, year on year he built up his skills and profile to eventually um, let himself good internship exposure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so I suspect that there are going to be a lot more questions. So I think yeah. for the next year, maybe we can take turns or something. I'm not sure. But one quick thing to make sure that everybody understands, right? Talent Connect, go and find that portal. It's on the website, you know, on our link. Just go there. We, we get all the employers to post there. That's our job. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think during the Career Catalyst class, yeah. you will be um, yeah. led through how you assess Talent Connect. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yes. Let's go to the next one. So, how competitive is it to secure a good internship? John, you should take this one. <laughs> yeah, I think this one. <laughs> We have answered this, right? It's very competitive. Yeah. <laughs> and if you don't get it, it's not that you're no good. It's mm -hmm. about the fit. So that's why mm -hmm. it makes uh, internship search, job search um, that challenging. Because it's really about what employers look for and whether you meet their fit for their business success. Yeah, don't forget that you're not just competing with other FASS students. Any job worth competing for is a job that a lot of people around the world want. Entire university, all six universities, yeah. and overseas grads. Any job that somehow only one literally an FS system is very likely that it's not as desirable <laughs> a job as you might think. Okay. The, the jobs that you actually want are very likely you're competing against some guy from Harvard. And that's the one you want to gun for. You should be ambitious like that. Okay. Yeah, let's go on. Yeah. So how long is the duration of internships and the internship programs and how do we apply for them? Okay, so applying for the internship itself is you can do it through Talent Connect, you can talk directly to the employers and the career catalyst people will help you a lot with that, right? But for the modules themselves, they fit the regular semester structure, okay? So that means that uh, you can either, you can do internships in the first semester, second semester, or even during the summer break. You know, if the internship roughly fits with the timeline of our semester, it's very easy for you to do the module together with it. Right. Now, someone mentioned just now about the MCs, right? So there are a number of different modules you can do, a number of different internship modules you can pair with an actual out there internship, right? So there is the, for instance, semester full-time, uh, that's eight MCs, semester part-time, that's four MCs, summer full-time, and that's four modular credits as well. You can even add them together. You can do summer plus the you know, semester for a half-year internship, for instance. Okay, uh, how do we apply? So don't forget there are two different part things here. There is applying for the internship itself, which is a process of True Talent Connect and talking to the employers directly. And then there is the issue of the internship module. That one is just doing it through the usual mod reg and all the rest of the uh, process. Uh, it may be not mod reg. You can, our office will handle it. You know, right? Okay, next question, please. Yeah. So which one is the ideal year of study for an internship? Mm. Fengxing, maybe you would like to take this one since you've taken so many different internships over the years. Uh, I think every year is ideal for an internship. <laughs> <laughs> because you have to build up your profile, you see. Because if you want to year four, you want to end up in like Unilever, PNG, you have to build up from like, you have to probably start as startups or SMEs, like not so reputable brands, gain the experience and move up and maybe by year three you can hit a PNG and that's when things like Coty, Unilever will open up to you when you get to that circle. And throughout these four years, actually what's most important is uh, your network. Through, like, you know, if you apply for Shopee and then how do you know what is the interview process? How do you know what mm -hmm. questions they'll ask? How do you know what tests they'll do? If you have friends that have already applied and got it, then they can probably give you inside tips or what's even best is if you have mentors or you have, um, they can give you referrals and you can jump straight away to the last stage of the interview, you know. So um, that's why CCA is, is very important. And also any mentoring program is very important. Just get to know people and then um, check out their LinkedIn profile. You don't have a LinkedIn, go sign up for one now. And, um, you know, even look at your profs, LinkedIn experiences. What, what have they done in the past, in the public or private sector? I have a friend who got an internship at MTI. Um, he, he had to ask his economics professor, like, mm, what kind of things MTI values? Uh, and then what, what, what should I do to, in order to get that internship? And the prof gave him good advice and he got that internship. That's his first internship. So really know the people around you, look at their LinkedIn profile and network with them. Yeah. 
strategically. Yeah. So may I just chime in here? Um, I fully agree with Penjin. I think it's a very nice touch there that every year is important. Um, but something to note is for a lot of the um, global employers or the um, big firms or even um, some smaller enterprises, they use the third year internship as uh, the way to hire graduates into their program. So strictly speaking, um, we have students who secure jobs one year ahead of their graduation because they went for their internship in the third year. And after a good performance, they were given priority offers. Now for you to be able to cut into this kind of internships, usually it's a structured program the third year, you must have at least done an internship in your second year, if not two internships in your first and second year and other projects and CCAs. And we usually encourage students to try first year um, to embark on a local internship, second year aim for an overseas internship. Uh, COVID situation is temporary. It may halt some of our overseas internships, but a lot of it have been converted to remote opportunities. So students still have some um, valuable learning opportunities there. And then the third year, you gun for a structured program that hopefully will convert your internship to a full-time job. Hmm. Yes, okay, that's uh, very important. One more point for, for this. It's like, you, as fast students, right, you have like so many opportunities available. You know, like B students, they'll gun for the very good private uh, sector internships. But then for fast students, you have to know whether you want private or public sectors. And then there's so many talks, you get to know the people there, right? And then in the private, there's like startup, and there's also MNCs, and there's a very popular MNCs, the big fours and that kind of stuff. So it's very important to, to start small with the talks and then slowly proceed and try out. If you, have a, if you want to try out both public and private, then make sure you plan it that way. And it's good to try out startup versus MNC. You'll see the huge difference. Um, there's a lot of revolution going on and, and you'll see for yourself really. It's very different. Thank you, thank you. Um, let's quickly go. We've got a couple uh, of questions actually. So would I be at a major disadvantage applying for internships if I do not have the relevant job experience? Hmm. Uh, Ms. Joan, uh, Prof. Lai, would, would you all like to pick this up? All right, I'll go first then. Um, well, if, that's why we encourage you to start early, right? If you're a first year freshman applying for internships, employers will understand um, you won't have much experience. But of course, if they look at what you have done for the young man, your national service, or um, what you have done um, during those months prior to coming to university, that may help show some motivation and proactivity. But nevertheless, if you are an undergraduate, most of the time employers are empathetic. They know you may not have a relevant job experience and that's why you are applying for an internship to gain the essential experience. But nevertheless, you have whole activities, you have leadership in your clubs, in your societies, and you would definitely bring relevant um, leadership qualities and skills um, into your internship, even if you may lack the industry exposure. Uh, Lloyd, do you have anything to add? Oh, this, this, you just took yeah. all the words out of my mouth. <laughs> obviously, if you, obviously, you will be at a disadvantage. That's why you must start as early as possible and start small, like what exactly. Benjamin was saying, right? You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I think if I may add, I think uh, it's necessary to broaden the definition of relevant job experience, especially in your year one, year two, because like as Ms. Uh, Ms. Jonti mentioned as well, it's not just about internships. Uh, yeah. Personally, for me, I remember doing an internship in my year one summer. And the only experience I had was some CCS back in high school and volunteering experience. But mm. I think they see your personality and they see a drive in you to learn, to grow. And that's what they would value in your initial years, definitely. Yeah, and I think overseas exposure help you stand out. Like I went Middle East, right? And then when I'm yeah. applying for the startup, um, the, actually the blockchain startup that actually has a blockchain community in the, in the Middle East. And then when you can, you have this kind of exposure and you can highlight it at the front of your CV, you'll catch that eye and you'll gain that chance for the interview, so. Yeah. Let me say something about the overseas thing, right? So the COVID thing is making it hard for all the travel, but it's temporary, it will go away. What I want to emphasize about this is, when you go on an overseas exchange, 
don't just be the usual people who I want to go to, you know, US and UK. Yeah, mm-hmm. those are very nice places to go, but they, they are not going to give you really that different of an academic culture compared to this place. Let's face it, we are an Anglophone country, we are an Anglophone university. Think a little bit about intentionally. Do an internship in a place that is a bit different because then you can really say, you really have experience in living in a very different environment, right? Mm-hmm. And when you apply for that job in the internship, that will actually matter a lot more. There are many people who went to, you know, UCLA or you know, Michigan for, for SEPs. But unless they are trying to sort of gain entry into academic circles, which is a completely different ballgame altogether, what's so special about that compared to what Peng Ching did, which is like to go to the Middle East? Companies are not trying to break into Michigan. They're trying to break into the Middle East. <laughs> can you see, can you see the, just be a bit more targeted in the way you think about what you're trying to get out of the, these experiences? Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, let's, well, let's, yeah, let's, Michigan is still a fine place. Don't get me wrong, okay? Because I, I, do. <laughs> <laughs> I have many good friends from there, so please. You know. <laughs> but that's a wise advice. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Let's, let's look at the next question. Yeah. Okay. What are the internship opportunities available for international students? And are there any visa related issues? Um, so, if I may just add uh, right off the bat, uh, being an international student myself, I can testify to this. I've not faced any issues. Um, nice. I think uh, going into Talent Connect, I'm overwhelmed by the number of opportunities available for me. And I think the only thing that might, uh, the only thing that matters is whether you've got the experience or not and whether you've got the right CV for it or not. Mm. Um, and I think, in fact, most, um, you know, as Peng Singh mentioned as well, uh, as well, most places do want students with different experiences, different knowledge, different backgrounds. So if anything, you would be bringing in something different at the table. And I think it's important to remember how to highlight that and how to use it to your advantage as opposed to, you know, thinking that I may be at a disadvantage or something as that. And as for visa related issues, I think um, most companies ensure that, uh, you know, they do the correct paperwork and everything is set. And as long as you follow the MOM regulations, you're really good to go. I I so far have not faced any issues. Uh, Ms. Joan, would you, would you like to uh, highlight something? No, this is good. I'm glad you brought in your own relevant experience. Um, and um, in the past, when I uh, spoke with uh, some international students, I find um, through their proactive engagement with um, career uh, services, they're able to get um, opportunities in the third country. So assuming someone comes from Vietnam, studied in NUS and then able to get an internship in Hong Kong, for example, or in um, China, um, or one even went to London uh, for her summer analyst program uh, in investment banking. So I think um, a lot would depends on your own um, drive, your own appetite um, and your creative energies uh, to take you to where you want to be. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay, let's let's look at the next question. Okay, can I intern and study at the same time? Uh, um, uh, this, is a, this is a perennial time management problem. Right? <laughs> in the previous session, there was a, a student who asked, can I take eight modules, you know, in the same semester? And Prof Yap basically said that, well, you know, I guess you can, but then you probably don't have a lot of sleep and you don't have any social life. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. You have to manage your time. You're now university students. You're not high school students anymore. We don't plan your time for you anymore, right? Is it possible to intern and study at the same time? Of course it is. Plan your time. Mm. Okay, that's the only thing, right? Don't forget that if you do a full semester of five modules, that is almost like 30 over 40 hours of work a week. Uh, you know, over, you know, contact hour is only three, mod- uh, three hours per, per module. But on top of that, you need to do your revision, your homework, you know, your papers to read and write and interacting with your peers to discuss those issues. And then on top of that, you're doing internships. So you just make, you just got to make sure that you are, you are kind of balancing this, right? And we have many students who do this. They are doing part-time internships during the semester, full-time internships during the summer. And some of them who manage to find uh, good internships during the semester, they decided to go full-time internship, maybe taking just two modules and we give them waiver for that. And some of those who actually say that, you know, you know what, I need to work full time during the semester. Can I go on a leave of absence? We have all those different ways to support you. But my advice is manage your time. Make sure you still have breathing room. Make sure you're still attending to your classes. 
make sure you still have a social life <laughs> because we That's want true. students who are actually like functional. We don't want you all to be doing this and then you, you know. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I mean, this is probably, I mean, I'm sure Peng Jing and I'm sure the two of you better be getting enough sleep. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, over here, we are um, also piloting um, a new initiative. Um, it's actually Provost um, Brain Cha to have uh, internship as a service. So mm -hmm. essentially, um, due to the suspension of some of the overseas opportunities, we see a lot of employers now offering projects and uh, remote opportunities for students to work on. Mm -hmm. And as long as the students are able to deliver the scope, um, the students has the flexibility to work on this project um, anywhere, anytime. So um, we, we thought, uh, yeah, this may then to make our uh, internship offering more dynamic. So we're going to pilot and launch the uh, internship as a service. We are currently at this stage where we are developing a two-sided um, marketplace where employers can give students um, projects and it's not time bound. It's not like you must only work on it during the uh, summer vacation. Even during term time, if you feel that this is something that you could do to help employers crunch numbers, do market research or um, craft a social media campaign, um, the, um, the terms are rather flexible. And then you may still be able to claim some credits from it. Or um, for students who have a specific skills or expertise, we allow you to then market on the platform what you can do. And employers may, may hunt you. So it's like what you're familiar with, uh, a lot of this e-commerce platform, they're selling products. Here we are trying to create this two-sided platform for you to sell your expertise and your service. So this is Akan Tatang. It will be coming up soon, but uh, you will be able to benefit from it because essentially it means you can um, intern and study at the same time. Yeah, just a quick point about this. So the e-commerce platform that you want to look at is Fiverr, F-I-V-E-R-R. -R. Yes. That's the, I use it by the way, to hire people around the world to do small things for me, <laughs> right? Every other week, you know, every other month, I will have some small job that I will post on some student chat group and say, hey, I need five people to help me do this. And students will ask, Profly, are you paying? I say, yes, yes, I'm paying. Right. <laughs> you know, and I can literally post in a student chat group and you'll, that job will be gone in like within an hour, mm. right? So you're always, you should always be looking out for these opportunities, right? People who need research assistance, people who need some people to crunch some numbers, craft some, you know, social media campaign, create websites and all that. Even those things, even if they don't give you modular credits, they are experiences, they add to your portfolio. Exactly. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, my own program, like the NOC, uh, NUS Overseas College, it is an intern and study program at the same yeah. time. Yeah. I'm doing like four modules. Like one is my internship, another one is a business pitching, another one is a business case module, and the last one is a market validation module. So they are like, I'm, I'm going to work, and then sometimes maybe during the weekends, I have to do my other modules and it's a great way to get to know the startup how, how startup processes and how startups work as well so you can find out about it and if you want to apply you can apply exactly well, let's let's look at the next one let's look at the next question how do we sign up for the fast 2.0 industry tech and do our majors have to complement the industry track? Yeah, I should take this one. Uh, I think, yeah, roughly I think this one. Okay, so the information is on our website. So, you know, I don't want to go into too much details here. Um, yes, the majors have to complement the industry track because each of the track comes with a list of curated majors, right? And this is based on historical data. Those of you who were in the this morning's, uh, you know, session, Dean also mentioned, right? When we created the five tracks, we actually talked to, you know, a senior you know, HR people, you know, who are people who are in these industries who are actually our alumni. So they gave us all very good feedback for this. We do know from historical data, we have plenty of data to crunch for this, where many of the majors uh, tend to go or which industries tend to hire what kinds of majors. We do have information like that, okay? Uh, how do you sign up? Now, it is, you can indicate your interest to us, uh, but actually you don't literally need to sign up because as long as you have all these things, we're going to have to give you the cert. We can't, we can't deny you the cert, literally, okay? So what you're gonna do is look at the guidance on the website. Which major do you have? What track are you targeting? Are you in the right major? Is that what you really wanna do? You think to yourself, what else do you need to do? You need to claim 
you know, X number of hard skills modules or internship or whatever. As, as long as you have all these things, you are already on the track. You don't need to specially tell us, but of course tell us so that we can help you track as well. Okay, look at the website, yeah. Let's go on. Yeah, let's look at the next one. How popular is FAST 2.0? And will I be able to qualify for it as long as I read the specified marks? Um, uh, okay, so in a sense, I already answered already. If the second part of the answer as question, which is that, you know, we are giving you the guidance. As long as you have these pieces, we can't stop you from having a track, so to speak, right? Okay, how popular is it? It's a bit weird to say because uh, this is only in the second year of its running. So we don't mm -hmm. expect a lot of data to, to crunch yet, right? My sense of it is that it's catching a very good layer of students who are a little bit more intentional in their, in their year one and two, right? Mm -hmm. Now, remember, this thing was only started last year. So right now, the first cohort is only in their year two. Do all FAS, do the majority of FSS students by their year two already have a very clear idea about which industry they want to go? That's very tricky, right? Mm -hmm. So you know that it's probably going to be a minority, but these are very, very target students who are very targeted in their thinking, right? So my suspicion is that it's going to be like five to 10% right now and it will grow slowly as people become a little bit more, you know, sort of like settled in thinking, uh, okay, this is the industry I want to target. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So right now it's a bit too early to say because the oldest group is only year two. So it's very hard to tell, right? Mm -hmm. uh, okay. I think let's go to the next one. Yeah. What kind of internships are available during the career track from FASS? Uh, I think in a sense, we already kind of uh, mentioned this already. Now, if you don't belong to a major that has a specific internship requirement, and there are only two such majors, communication is a new media, and they will handle their own internship opportunities. They have a lot of contacts in the industry, so we're not worried about them at all. And then the other group is social work. Again, they have their own contacts with all the social service providers. Okay, so you know, the people who are in the department are actually on those councils and those uh, you know, organizations and ministries as well. So I'm not worried about these two groups because uh, the contacts are all in the department. For the rest of you, uh, who are not from these two majors, do it through Talent Connect because we, we really work very hard to talk to companies. Whenever I meet a potential employer, I'm always like, there are two things. If I meet an uh, alumni that we should, you know, just connect, oh, you're for FASS. Hmm, would you like to join our mentorship program as a mentor? <laughs> you know, <right? laughs> yeah, I, you know, I have, I have gone to a wake and come back with a mentor. I've literally done that kind of stuff before. <laughs> right? yeah. And the other thing, I know our CRG colleagues uh, do a lot of is they are always reaching out to companies to persuade them to post their opportunities on Talent Connect. Right? Mm -hmm. And if I come across an employer you know, who is an alumni or that, I also tell them. And sometimes they'll come to us directly and say that, hey, I'm looking for two interns. I'll tell them, no, just post in Talent Connect. All our students are there. Okay. So uh, what kind of internships are available? They are kind of everywhere. They're kind of all over the place. So it's a bit hard to say, but the whole range of public sector and private sector opportunities are available mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, I think this was one of the last for the pre-collated questions uh, we've got maybe about 10 minutes Great, so we fantastic. can look at some live questions as well that we've got yes yes please do yeah. sure. wow we are actually on time that's fantastic yeah, <laughs> that's nice <We're> good <laughs> okay, um, let's um, all the students who are of this orientation right now please scan the QR code and uh, you can send in your questions and we try our best to answer as many as we can. Um, I think we've already got some coming in. Let's have a look at those. Okay, so uh, maybe we can take the first one. What should I look out and prepare for if I plan to go for post-grad? I, I can answer both quickly. So career okay. catalyst is pre-allocated. If you tell us that you prefer to do it in the other semester, you, it's okay for you to write in. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay, but we do pre-allocate to make sure that you have it as soon as possible and as painlessly as possible, right? Mm -hmm. It's, you know, uh, the colleagues who are teaching it, they're all career advisors. They're very close to, to us, you know, and then, you know, they work very closely with us. Good friends of our, our whole faculty, actually. Several of them are, one of them, are all of them, no, they're not all of them are FASS alum, right? Ling Ling is FASS alum. I can't remember which one, who else is FASS alum already. Okay, now, what should I look out for and prepare for? Look out, what should I look out and prepare for if I plan to go for postgraduate studies? Now, this is going to depend on what kind of postgraduate studies, right? So, in some cases, these are more like professional programs. Um, you know, for instance, Masters of Clinical Psychology, right? You need to be, in a sense, you know, high performing in your major in, in psychology and you are targeting the clinical psychology route. You are trying to become a clinical psychologist, right? So, I, I would actually say that the correct thing to do for, for that 
will be to talk to your pros to find out, especially the clinical pros, to find out why is it that they are looking for, those programs are looking for, and you make sure that you do the things that you know, enable you to do that. But here's a more general piece of advice. For the academic subjects, for the highly intellectual subjects, for you to target postgraduate studies is essentially for you to target, generally speaking, an academic career. I would actually say that you need to read up a lot more about what that entails, right? Many students don't realize that that is a, a very, very special calling for very, very few people, to put it in the simplest possible way, right? Unless you are the kind of nerd like people like me who actually <laughs> want to study for the rest of your life, it's not really what you think it is, <laughs> okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, and if, but if you're one of those people, one of the few who want to be a nerd like this, sure, we can, I think we can, we can, you know, we do host uh, smaller level, smaller talks for people who are targeting particular uh, disciplines. I, I did one for the philosophy, uh, philosophy students uh, uh, last year uh, with the help of one of the CFG advisors as well, right? Um, but the one short answer is, if you are targeting post-grad in academic disciplines, you, you are basically saying that you are top of your class in academics. Otherwise, not much point actually, right? You are, you are kind of in that bracket, okay? But you got to be nerdy like, like people like me. <laughs> Otherwise, it's not much point. Okay. Yes. Um, uh, I think let's look at one more, which has got, mm -hmm. got two votes. So, uh, our internship during the winter break recommended. Uh, Joan? Uh, um, yes. Yeah. Um, in fact, uh, from the sharing so far, I get it. You would know um, to make uh, use of every vacation to uh, embark on um, an experiential learning, whether it's internship or um, a certain program that helps you build networks and skills. So last year, um, uh, during the December uh, break, we have 30 students um, that took up an internship in Chongqing, China. Uh, and it was um, very heartening to see uh, quite a number of them were from FASS. They came back first week of January this year. And shortly after, all overseas opportunities are suspended uh, for reasons that you are familiar with. So yes, please take advantage of the winter holidays to take up an internship. Yeah. yeah. Let me answer the one about UE space. Remember, mm -hmm. to, I, I, I mentioned this earlier in the talk, internship modules are internship modules, internships are internships. Internships are things you do with employers out there. You don't need the modules. Technically speaking, you already get all your, uh, you know, all your, all the benefits on doing internship is out there with you and the employer and the work experience and the CV and the letters and the connections. If you want to claim the credits, we are here ready to help you as well. Okay. And we will allow you to claim the credits by writing reports for us, by reflecting upon the industry experience and all that. So yes, it is true that if you park a lot of things in your UE space, then you don't have a lot of UE space left for you to do internship modules. But that doesn't stop anyone from doing internships, right? I'm, again, I want to emphasize, I'm very sure that Peng Jing and uh, Kitali especially did not claim that many modular credits for doing those internships. Mm. They just did internships. Because you have all your time in the summer, right? What are you going to do in the summer? May use of time to get some experience. You don't necessarily have to claim modular credits for it. So in a sense, it's kind of irrelevant whether or not it's in or it's not in the UE space. It is just that if you do one in your UE space, Yes, we do have the module to support you. Um, can history students get internships? Of course, all FAS students can get internships. It is all about going into Talent Connect, look for possible things to do, and start calling people up, start you know, interviewing, and so on and so forth. Uh, one of the history majors I know of uh, from a few years ago, she's working in a media research company. You ask her, so what, what did learning about the history matter? Of course it matters. What do you think she's putting to work her skill of being able to do this archival research? Right? So the media research company will tell her, okay, we, you know, there's this other company that hires us to do research on this particular market. Can you please do this research for, for us? The answer is, of course she can. What do you think, who, who, who is better prepared to do this than a historian who is able to crunch all kinds of qualitative data? That's mm -hmm. what she does, okay? Yeah. Uh, I think we can go down to the, can I choose to take the pre-allocated G mods in another sem? Yes, just write in, uh, write in uh, to fast help, uh, you know, to let them know. Yeah. Uh, is not a, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think the international student one we can answer as well. How does NUS help international students with MOE grant? Uh, the answer is no, but you do have three years to slowly go and find a job. We, you know, this is an MOE thing. It's not actually an NUS thing, yeah. technically speaking, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
But of course, as an NUS student, you have full access to NUS resources, all right? Talent Connect, Career Advisors, we're all here to help. Mm. So don't worry, never ever feel as if somehow we're not, you know, we don't care about you. No, we do care about you. But we are not set up to literally, you know, make it the case that you can connect with the job. That's something that has to be between you and the employer. Right? Yes. This is a general principle that we operate by, right? But all our resources are here. Talent Connect and all the you know, connections we have and so on and so forth. Yeah. Uh, okay, I think this might be the end of the live questions. Okay. Uh, oh no, we've, we've got quite a few of them. Uh, we can answer we, a few more because... Uh, yeah, we can maybe do the ones that are voted. Uh, okay, can we do internships while on a work, while on a student pass? Yes. Yes. Yes, yeah. As long as you are a fully matriculated student on a student pass, you can do internships. Yes, yes, okay. Uh, then let's take the next one if I... Have yeah, okay, so for the UE MCs thing, mm -hmm. send it to fast help. Because uh, let the undergraduate team answer that. That will be more correct answer, whatever coming from me. Um, you know, let, let the undergraduate division answer that. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, uh, research assistant, teaching assistant. Now, these kind of things are a little bit more idiosyncratic. They depend on particular departments, right? And particular <laughs> connection. Now, think about it carefully. Think, put yourself in the shoes of the professors. Why would they dare to hire you if they don't know your abilities? Right? So, that's the kind of thing where you're... Peng, Peng, uh, Peng Jin was mentioning, so personal connections and all that, you have sort of proven your worth doing research in a module, and the pros look at you, okay, she can crunch that data. Yeah, I'll hire her. Mm. Right? So if people who just come through Talent Connect, it's going to be a bit harder for us to assess, isn't it? Like I said, for this kind of very specialized things, likewise teaching experience, teaching assistantships, we got to be sufficiently impressed with you personally, we know that you can deliver, otherwise we're not going to hire you for these sort of things. Yeah. Okay, that's why, again, get to know your pros, make sure that you do well in your modules and so on. So those things do matter, okay? Exactly. Mm -hmm. And a lot of those positions are posted in what we call the NUS Study Work Scheme Portal. It's a different portal from Talent Connect. Yeah. But like what Prof. Loy has mentioned, um, it's better to um, get to know your prof and show your method and uh, prove yourselves to get those opportunities. Yeah. Okay. Our internship is paid. Uh, the general answer is most of them are. Yes, substantially. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think we're running a bit short on time and uh, there are lots of questions pouring in. So maybe we can have uh, you know, students writing into us later to help answer the questions. Uh, as mentioned before, we'll definitely be compiling the uh, list of FAQs and helping answer as many questions as possible. Uh, may I invite the students to also join the upcoming major specific sessions? So um, there you can get more uh, catered answers to uh, the questions. Um, a huge thank you to the panel for helping answer all of these questions. Uh, before we announce the winners, Prof. Loy, Ms. Joan, uh, would you have any closing thoughts, any closing remarks that you would like to leave the students with? You are here already. You are NUS students. We <laughs> use the opportunities here. We know that you will do us proud. Well, I echo what Prof. Loy has just said. Um, as you start your university life, I hope you will begin with the end in mind and to finish strong um, at the end of your academic pursuit and land a career in your preferred role, preferred industry, requires um, thoughtful planning. And um, I hope you will take full advantage of all our resources, um, platforms, employer networks, uh, internships uh, to prepare yourself for success. So um, um, I wish all of you well. And um, in doing all this, I hope, uh, yes, you will also find time for rest, recreation, property, friends, and life partner. All right, have a good afternoon. Uh, you, any last thoughts that you would like to add? Oh, no. Feel free to connect with me at LinkedIn if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> That's wise. That's a good senpai right there. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, thank you so much, everyone. And uh, now, before we sign off and we end the session, obviously, the moment you've all been waiting for, the results of the Kahoot quiz. So let's look at the podium and let's see who the winners are.
Wow. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Hey, wait a minute, that was me. LHD is me. <laughs> <laughs> I lost to a student. <laughs> This shows us what FAS students can do, definitely. Yeah. So, um, it's okay. I, I can I should. I shouldn't take the prize. You should give it to the next person. Yes, yes, definitely. <laughs> so, uh, we'll be giving the prizes to uh, first, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth winners. Um, if you've got the notification on your phone, please get in touch with us. Otherwise, we'll be touch uh, touching base with you as well. Um, you can contact us at the email address. Thanks so much, everyone. Thanks so much, uh, Joan and uh, Kitali. My pleasure. Thank yeah. you, Kitali, Penjun, Prof Loy, and uh, all who attend, as well as our organizers. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. All right. All the best. Yeah. yeah students, just get in touch with us at the email address. Um, and essentially, if there are any other queries that you want us to address or any other issues that you encountered as well, please uh, feel free to contact the FASS Dean's office at this number and uh, also write into us at this email address. Uh, and with that, I would like to bring this session to an end. Thank you so much to the panel and to all our attendees for joining in.